Okay, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Um, there's a video um, elsewhere on the channel about adding and subtracting fractions. This is a continuation of that, really, or an extension of that, um, because mixed numbers are a bit like fractions, aren't they? Because here's a mixed number, one and a half, and here's another one, three and one third, let's say. Um, and, um, yeah, mixed numbers are called mixed numbers because they're a mixture of a whole number and a fraction, hence mixed numbers, whole number and fraction, uh, and these are two of them. How can we add mixed fractions? Well, there's a couple of ways I'm going to show you. The first way is to treat this sum um, as a combination of things, because in fact one and a half is one <laughs> and a half, funnily enough, uh, and three and a third is three plus a third, isn't it? And what you can do is separate the numbers like that, the mixed numbers like that, and you can add the whole numbers and the fractions separately. So in this case, one plus three would be four, and then you have to add a half and a third together. And we did that earlier without adding fractions. Do you remember what we did? With one half and one third, we have to find a common denominator um, for two and three, a number that's in the two times table and the three times table. Well, I know that two times three is six, so let's go with six as a common denominator. Um, two times three is six, so one times three is three, and three times two is six, so one times two is two. That's the rule for equivalent of fractions, isn't it? Whatever you do to the denominator, you do the same thing to the numerator. So there we go, we've got three sixths plus two sixths, and three and two is five, so our answer is four and five over six. That's one way of doing that sum, is to add the whole numbers and the fractions separately. I reckon you can do one plus three, don't you? And I also reckon you can do one third plus two third using your simple technique for uh, adding fractions together. The alternative is to do this. One and a half plus three and a third. Here's the question again. Uh, instead of adding the parts separately, what you can do is turn both mixed numbers into top-heavy fractions. Uh, do you remember how we do that? Times the whole number by the denominator and add the numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 1 and a half is the same as 3 halves. Do you remember our improper fractions, our top-heavy fractions? Over on the other side, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, so that's 10 thirds. And here we have two top-heavy fractions that we can then uh, add together by finding our common denominator again, turning these into equivalent fractions with that denominator, just like we did. 3 to the 9, 3 times 2 is 6 over here, 10 times 2 is 20. You just see the numbers are a bit bigger, that's all. Um, add the numerators, 9 plus 20 is 29 over 6. Um, and then this is a top of your fraction, our answer this time. Um, and unless you're told otherwise, you should always turn top of your fractions into mixed numbers at the end. So we need to, remember how we do this, we turn, we, we consider the fraction to be a, a division problem. We do 29 divided by 6. We say how many times does 6 go into 29? And I think 4 sixes are 24, aren't they? 4 times 6 is 24. And if we've got 24 out of 29, what's left? Well, 24 plus 5 is 29, so we've got a remainder of 5. We're big boys and girls now. We don't need to write as a remainder. We can write a remainder as a fraction this time over the number we're dividing by. What are we dividing by? By 6. So our answer is 4 and 5 sixths. Funnily enough, just like it was when we did it the other way. So there we go. Two ways of adding mixed numbers. And it works for subtracting as well. Add the whole numbers and the fractions separately, as we did here. Or turn your mixed numbers into top-heavy fractions, here and here. And add them together as fractions, making sure at the end that you turn your top-heavy fraction into a mixed number at the end. Um, I'll just show you it works with subtraction. Here's one. Five and four fifths minus two and what should we go with? Um, well, let's go with two and one sixth. Okay. Uh, whole numbers, first of all. Whole numbers and fractions separately. Five minus two is three, so that gives us three and four fifths minus one sixth. That's the whole number spoken for. Now, the fractions, a common denominator, a common multiple of 5 and 6. Well, 5 times 6 is 30, so let's use that. 5 times 6 is 30, so 4 times 6 is 24. And 6 times 5 is 30, so 1 times 5 is 5. And there we go. So we've got 3 and whatever 24 minus 5 is. 24 take away 5 is 19, I think. So 19 thirtieths is what's left when we take 5 thirtieths away from 24 thirtieths. And we simplify our answer, 19 over 30. Well, I know that 19 is a prime number, what with me being clever and all that. I know that 30 is not in the 19 times table, so there's no way I can divide those two numbers by anything other than 1, so it can't simplify. 
there's my answer that way. Let's write it out again and, and do it turning the, fraction, turning the numbers into uh, top heavy fractions. 5 and 4 fifths minus 2 and 1 sixth. Now then, let's make these top heavy. 5 times 5 plus 4. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 plus 4 is 29. Over 5. And over here, 2 times 6 plus 1 is 12 plus 1, which is 13 over 6. A couple of fractions there. Find our common denominator of, let's say, 30 again. And here I think you see why I prefer the, the first method, because um, now to turn these into equivalent fractions over 30, we're going to create for, for ourselves um, some calculations. We might prefer to avoid if we possibly could. Um, 5 times 6 is 30, so on the left-hand side I've got to multiply 29 by 6 now. Not the end of the world, it's not out of the question, and I'm sure you're all uh, thinking, what's the big deal? Uh, and I tend to agree with you. Um, first of all, you could write it down vertically, couldn't you? Like so, and do 9 times 6, which is 54, over 5, and 2 times 6, which is 12, plus our 5 here makes 17, and we've got an answer of 174. Or, if you want to do it vert uh, mentally, you might be thinking in your head, 20 times 6 is 120, um, 9 times 6 is 54, and then you might be adding those together in your head to get 174, which would be the right answer as well. Some of you might be thinking, well, hang on, 29 is nearly 30, isn't it? So why don't I do 30 times 6 in my head, which is 180, and then I can take away one lot of 6. Oops, turns, turns right properly. Uh, I can take away one lot of 6 to give myself an answer of 174. That's another way you might be doing it. 30 times 6 uh, minus one lot of 6 to give us 29 lots of 6. Um, that would work too, and you may have your own way as well. Uh, anyway, it, the answer is 174. I'll just say uh, this is this is this is the reason I prefer to um, use the first method where I'm keeping the whole numbers and the fractions separately. Um, but there we go. Let's let's carry on. Over here on the other side, we've got 13 six. What have I done to six to make 30? Times it by five. 13 times five again. It's not on your times tables, is it? But um, you should be able to work it out without too much trouble. Ten fives and three fives, possibly. Ten fives of 50. Three fives of 15. 50 and 15 is 65. Some of you might know 12 fives are 60, so 13 fives obviously is five more than that. Okay, there we go. There's a denominator, 174 minus 65, or 74 minus 65 is 9, I reckon. So 174 minus 65 is 109. And that's the top of every fraction, which we need to turn into a mixed number. How many times does 30 go into 109? Well, 30 times 3 is 90, isn't it? 30, 60, 90. And 4 times 30 will be 120, which is too much. So we can get 3 in to make 90, which gives us a remainder of 19. And there we go. We have 3 and 19 over 30. Same as we had just now. Same answer, different methods. I, I repeat, I, I prefer the first way, uh, keeping the uh, whole numbers and the fractions separate. Um, I just think it keeps the numbers more manageable. Um, but there we have it. Uh, one more example, just for fun. Um, 6 and 11 over 17 minus 3 and 24 over 51. OK, now then, you tell me <laughs> which method you prefer here. I don't want to be doing 6 times 17 plus 11, and I certainly don't want to be turning a fraction over 17 into a fraction over something bigger than that by multiplying, what will that be? That'll be oh, something big. Um, so I'm going to do it <laughs> the way I advocated. 6 take away 3, which is 3. And then we got 11 over 17 minus 24 over 51. Who's got a common multiple of 17 and 51? Sounds tricky, doesn't it? Until you remember that 3 times 17, well, double 17 is 34. 34 over 17 is 51. So few e, it's not as difficult as it looked like. We can turn them both into fractions over 51. The second one already is. The first one, we're times 17 by 3. So we'll do that times 3. 11 threes are 33. And 33 minus 24 is 9. And 9 over 51. A fraction that cannot be simplified, I would suggest. Except by dividing by 3, of course. Because 51 is a multiple of 3. Um, and so is 9. If I divide 9 by 3, I get 3. And if I divide 51 by 3, I get 17, don't I? Because we did it earlier. 17 
by 3 is 51. So 51 divided by 3 is 17. And that's not going to simplify, is it? Because 17 is a prime number, and so is 3. So they definitely can't be divided by um, each other or by any other number. 3 and 3 over 17. That's um, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Just to reiterate, you've got two options. A, uh, add or subtract the integers, that's the whole numbers, and the fractions separately. Uh, or, B, you can turn the mixed numbers into top-heavy fractions, also called improper fractions, and you can add and subtract the whole lot as fractions. Just to reiterate, I would suggest that uh, getting on for 9 times out of 10, option A is by far the easier option. Um, but in a video that uh, gonna, I'm going to do later on, um, I'll show you what to do um, if you follow um, option A when the second fraction is bigger than the first fraction. That's the only situation in which option A I think might get a little complicated and there'll be a video on that coming up very soon.